I'm going to share with you four reasons why you should stay away from the freestyle Libre sensors. Dude, I made like 30 videos telling people how good these sensors are and now you want to tell them to stay away? Yeah man, we got a lot of comments from people who didn't like the sensors. These voices need to be heard. Let's go! The first reason to stay away from the Freestyle Libre sensors is when you're wearing the sensor, people are asking you really weird questions. Are you a cyborg? Is this a tracking device? Are you trying to quit smoking? When people got frustrated with me, they even said, let's press this off button. What is the weirdest question about your sensor that you got? Let us know in the comments. These questions are a bit frustrating, I know, but the only other option you have is to prick your fingers. This is 21st century and as the most popular type 1 diabetic Nick Jonas says, we have self-driving cars, we have robots that vacuum and people still prick their fingers. Finger sticks? Really? If you want to avoid questions from strangers, you can hide your sensor. You don't have to show it off. Try putting it on the inner side of your arm or on your thigh. It's much harder to spot there. What I actually like about the Libre button is that you can sometimes spot other diabetics wearing it and it's really cool. It always makes me feel really good knowing that I'm not the only one who has to deal with the highs and lows and manage their blood sugars 24 seven. There are other people who have to do exactly the same thing. The second reason many people stay away from the Freestyle Libre sensors is that the sensor is never accurate. It always gives you a different reading than a glucometer. This morning it was showing 110 and I was 130 and yesterday the difference was even bigger. That's unacceptable for me. I need to know exactly where I am and I need to know the exact number. Hold on, let's talk about it. First of all, nothing in science is 100% accurate. Even two different glucometers will most of the time read slightly different numbers. And there are some cheap glucometers on the market that are very inaccurate and comparing the sensor readings to those does not really make sense. And the blood sugar number that you get from your glucometer very much depends on your testing technique. You always need to wash your hands really well, dry them with a clean towel and change the lancet frequently. I think most of us don't always do that. And so comparing the number from the sensor to the number from the glucometer does not really make that much sense anymore, does it? Plus the sensor is using a different measuring method and the number are not supposed to be spot on with the numbers from blood. From my experience it's key to not only pay attention to the absolute number that the Freestyle Libre system gives you, but we need to also pay close attention to the trend arrows. That's where the most added value of the system is. Because the arrow gives you a prediction for the nearest future. It will tell you if you are stable or if you are rising or dropping. It also tells you how fast you are rising or dropping. If you have arrows straight up, you are rising very fast fast and so the actual blood sugar is probably higher than the number shown on the screen. Man, you and your arrows. Another reason to stay away from Freestyle Libre is that the sensor is attached to your body 24 7. You cannot take it off. Well technically you can take it off but when you take it off you will not able to put it back on so you kind of threw away all of your money that you paid for the sensor, if you know what I mean. Well you are right, if you don't want something attached 24 7 then the Freestyle Libre really is not for you. But for me this is not really a problem, because if I wear it 24 7 then I have my blood sugar under control 24 7, I achieve better results in the long term. And not just me, this goes for everyone, because the more information we have about our blood sugar movements, the better treatment decisions we can make. And if you're looking for evidence coming from an actual medical professional, which I'm not, let's have a look at this short video. A large audit across the UK of now about 15,000 users of the Freestyle Libre it showed that you people's HbA1c reduced. This is the number of severe hypos where people needed help from somebody else to treat their hypos, they reduced. The number of hospitalizations that reduced, the number of diabetic ketoacidosis reduced, and most importantly, diabetes-related distress. So feeling overwhelmed with your diabetes, feeling like you're failing with your diabetes, also improved over time. So better HbA1c, less severe hypos, less hospitalizations due to ketoacidosis, and even diabetes-related distress improved. Well, as I said, I'm not a medical professional, but if I hear about the impact of wearing the sensor, I feel like it's really worth having this little button on 24-7. Guys, if you are wearing the Freestyle Libre System 2, and if you have experienced similar benefits, please share your success stories in the comment section with the community. By the way, I often completely 
forget that I have the sensor on me because it is so small and so sleek. Plus with Freestyle Libre 3, which is the next sensor generation, this button will get even smaller and more discreet. And I made a whole video about Freestyle Libre 3, which is the new generation of the sensor that is coming out soon. So if you haven't seen it, check it out. I will link it here and in the comment section below. The fourth reason many people stay away from Freestyle Libre sensors is alarm fatigue that the Freestyle Libre 2 gives you. A lot of people find it challenging to deal with constant alarms, telling you that your blood sugar is too high or too low, waking you up at night and ruining your sleep. And so they just turn the receiver off or avoid the sensors completely. Now this really is a serious topic and from my experience it's really necessary to set the alarms in a way that fits our lifestyle and our diabetes management style. So if you are struggling with alarm fatigue, try to sit down with your doctor and set the exact levels where you need to take action. For me these levels are 80 for my lows and 150 for my highs. So the only time I want to get alerted and disturbed by the system is when my blood sugar is dropping under 80 or rising above 150. Because I know at this point I need to get a snack to bring my blood sugar up or take a little bit of insulin to bring my blood sugar down. At any other time I don't need to care about my blood sugar at all because I don't need to do anything about it when it's in the ideal range between 80 and 150. Now if you're only gonna do something about your high at 200 or 250 then don't set your alarm at 150 because this is not a level where you're gonna take action. This is not when you need to be alerted. And this way you will get less alarms, you will be able to use the system more effectively and hopefully you will be able to get rid of your alarm fatigue. Guys, you probably realized by now that the goal of this video is not really to encourage you to stay away from the Freestyle Libre system. It's actually the exact opposite. I want to encourage you to use the Freestyle Libre system or any other CGM to be honest because the continuous glucose monitoring CGM is something that really changed my life and improved the quality of my life for a better. It has been a true game changer for me. On my channel I made about 30 different videos about Freestyle Libre, so check them out here if you want to learn any of my tips and tricks. And if you want to watch some of my bonus content, connect with me one-on-one -on -one, or just support my channel financially, then click the join button under the video or join my Patreon community. Link is in the description. Thanks for watching, I will see you next time. Ciao!